really money, this a triple threat Really started with nothing, had to manifest If you don't know your worth, they gon' give you less Why they envy me? Cause I'm the best MVP My legacy is how they remember me And I know success brings your enemies Welcome back to the Triple Threat Podcast I'm one of your hosts, Ryan Keys, A.K.A. BK609 And also one of your hosts, Chris Bruce, A.K.A. Detroit Mogul It's your boy, Vic Gurley MVP, Vic Michelle Angela, welcome to the Triple Threat Podcast. Welcome, welcome. Thank you, guys. Tell us a little bit about yourself. Um, I'm a veteran. I'm an entrepreneur. I own a salon, and that's kind of it for me. Well, I also have a skincare line that I'm also working on too. So, salon. What type of salon? How'd you get into? Um, it's a beauty salon, so I mostly do waxing, but I am partner with my sister, and she does nails. And how I got into it, um, I want to say around three years ago, I kind of was stuck, the same old jobs, got out the military, and then I found kind of like a calling for it. Hmm. And it grew f- ever since then. So waxing, is this like the... Like- Intimate wax. <laughs> yes. Uh, Everybody. Yeah. So, like, so like, you see vaginas every day? I see vaginas oh. every single day. I see about 10 to 15 a day. Mm-hmm. Yes. And I also wax men, if you're going to ask. I, I, oh, I wow. was going to ask that. Yo. I, that was, I was going to say, do men come in there? Yes. I do have a pretty good, solid male clientele. They get everything done from chest, facial wax, to even male Brazilians. So, I see it all. Male Brazilian. That's crazy. Yeah, are they straight males getting Brazilian? <laughs> They're straight. Um, a lot of them are actually uh, referraled by their girlfriends or their wives. Oh, she mm-hmm. told me she's seen you walking on out of there. So, random question. I know this is crazy, but I've always wondered when you a waxer, right? You wear a mask? Um... Sometimes, you know, I think COVID, it was when I re- really started wearing a mask. Mm. Um, but I never really wore a mask before that, you know. Well, let me get to the nitty gritty <laughs> of the reason why I'm asking this question. Because I guess a mask <laughs> is irrelevant. Because you can smell somebody's bad breath through the mask. You can smell a fart through the mask. <laughs> <laughs> you know where I'm going with this. Yes. <laughs> Do um, you smell odors while you're doing this waxing? So, Yes. Ooh. Um, not all the time. Um, you know, everybody's different. Everybody mm-hmm. carries different BO. So it's, it's kind of like, you just got to put up with it. You know, my job is to wax you, not to tell you, Hey, you need to take a shower. Or, hey, you kind of smell a little weird, you know? So you don't let them know like, Hey, look, nope, it's not my job. You know, tuna. We don't like And I, and I also don't want to, you know, make anybody feel uncomfortable. Yeah, I got you. you know, some of the, some of these women, honestly, you know, they run really busy lives. Like, you know, a lot of these women have their own, you know, businesses or their nurses that are coming straight from work and they need to get this done. Um, so you never know someone's situation where, you know, this is essential for them. Um, so not all the time people are going to be fresh out the shower and like smelling squeaky clean, you know? So like I said, I get paid to just wax you. Mm. Mm-hmm. I think I would have a requirement. Like I would have a, like a sign. something in this. Not like maybe a little something in the bathroom. Like what do you call it? Like the bidet joint? The bidet or some <laughs> some some man wipes or something in there that's like, hey, I mean, I do, you- I do carry wipes. I, you mm. know, I kind of make it known like, hey, I have wipes. It's a little mm. optional. <laughs> it's, it's optional, you uh-huh. know. And it's more based on someone's comfort. Mm. I got you. Yeah. The cup? Yeah, he almost too much Migos. Oh, yeah, I ain't dropping my cup. Oh, drop it though. No, I might no, spit no. a little, but I ain't gonna drop it. <laughs> so, for somebody that's trying to get started in that business, like what? Explain the process. Like, what did it take to actually get up and running? So, my situation, from what I learned, was a little complicated. Well, not necessarily. You know, I was, uh, you know, I joined the military when I was seventeen. So, cause I didn't have a direct path on what I wanted to do. So I specialized in logistics for five years and then I became a makeup artist part-time. So as I was working in the military full-time, um, you know, I was working at, um, Dillard's part-time as a makeup artist and, um, there was an esthetician 
who did waxing eyebrows and she worked for you know a co-company there um and she told me about it and it interests me because i was already into that so that's how i i kind of dove, dove into it she was like you know the school is a lot easier um it's not super expensive you just need a license and she's like it's down the path of what you want to do um so that's how i got into it so when i got my license i got out of the military um and then i started working at european wax center to kind of like guide me to see what i wanted to do if i wanted to do facials waxing um and then from there just the waxing just kind of stuck I became a pro at it, and after a year of working for somebody, I just became self-employed. How long ago? How long ago did this start? Um, it's about to be almost three years okay. since I've been self-employed. Yeah, and, and I, honestly, it's more of like, you know, I got a license. I had to learn. I had to figure out which, which part of it I wanted to be. Do I want to do more facials? Do I want to do lashes? Do I want to do waxing? You know, you kind of have to master which one. You don't know which one you're going to fall into unless you actually absolutely love one particular thing. And uh, after some time, once I did master it, I just saved up a bunch of money on the side, bought the materials, bought the products, and then got an LLC. And yeah, got a, got a lease on an, a little studio, and that's how I started. I was just going to ask you that when it comes to like the real estate side of things, is location super, super important? Or is so I'll say this, yes and no. Um, the only reason why, because at the time I was living in Apollo beach, um, and it was like a good 40, 50 minute drive to Tampa. Um, I had this girl that I was completely faithful to, and I did my lashes with her and she was an hour away. And for every two weeks I had to get my lashes done. And for a whole year, I went to her faithfully, like, like, yeah. mm -hmm. like when yeah. you have somebody that works with you, that knows your eye, you know, like, you know, your hair type. They know how to how style you and everything. You just stick to them. It doesn't matter how far they are. Um, but sometimes, yeah, location does matter because sometimes, you know, people, like I said, people run busy lives. Um, so it's more of conveniency for some people. If you're close and you can just do the job and it's, it is what it is, yeah. All right. Makes sense. So, so I, got a, I got a question. Oh, no. Uh oh When he hit you with that, he said, I got prepared. a question. I can tell. Get your mind <laughs> so ready. look. Since we were just talking about lashes, uh -uh. <laughs> do women get their lashes done for themselves or they get it done for their man? Or you? Uh, what, okay, what you that's do? okay. So um, I want to say nine times out of ten, it's for them, realistically. Mm -hmm. um, I, when I first got lashes done, I honestly just wanted to look, wanted to see if I would look any different. And when I got lashes done the very first time, it meant my eyes pop. And I didn't feel like I had to wear so much makeup. I didn't have to do so much, you know? Um, not all guys can notice the difference, you know? But some guys actually do, and it's nice. But obviously women compliment women. So it's, it's, mostly, it's mostly for women, to be honest with you. I'm glad you said that, because <laughs> I always wonder, why the <laughs> hell do y'all get lashes? Yeah. yeah, it's mostly just to make us feel really better. we really don't care. We yeah. never said <laughs> We don't you know care. She so Damn, her lashes lash. are on point. Hey, I was oh just going to ask, have you ever had a man come up to you and say, damn, I love your lashes? Um, I think I've only ever had two guys ever you know when i when i first got them fully done they're like nice and full and they're like wow your, your lashes look so nice you know like your eyes are so pretty because I, I have brown eyes you know it's unless the lighting is hitting me good I'm not really gonna tell so i think i've only had two guys but for the most part it's honestly just women yeah, that's what I thought. yeah. literally just women i'm gonna say i for me personally i hate that me personally because you're saying me that is you personally but anyway <laughs> humble my thing is when it comes to lashes the only thing that i notice is when they're too long oh yeah your <laughs> that's when i notice them is when they're too long <laughs> um I, when them joints look like you got like a a, a, a velvet <laughs> joint sitting on you it's like whoa all right you thought that was okay. you know what i mean so i did have that happen to me oh, once <laughs> It was very funny, actually. Um, so I, I, you know, I'm very busy with my schedule, you know, being an entrepreneur, you know, with my clients, 
you know, having time to even like, you know, with my personal life, my friends, you know, events, um, even my dog, like everybody has to have like a piece of me, you know? Um, so I can't book things in advance, you know, because I, even on my off days, I'm actually working, you know, if I'm not networking, I'm like, you know, I'm running around catching up, doing other things. Um, so I never can actually book my next appointment. So when I do it, it's last minute. So of course I couldn't book with my, my usual lady and I had to book with somebody else. And, uh, she assumed that I did mega lashes and um, she didn't even ask me. She just did it. Mm. So when I opened my eyes, I was like, they feel kind of heavy when I looked in the mirror. Yeah. I had like broomsticks, mm. like oh, legitimate God. broomsticks. And it took like literally two weeks for them to fully shed before it started to look kind of like normal and decent. Mm. But yeah, it, it happened to me once and never again. So why don't you just like take some scissors or like some clippers and just, ah, you can't, you can't, you can't do that. No, you can't do that. Oh. You know, right. I mean, you can have them professionally removed, but you know, lashes go through a shedding process. So, you know, within a week and two, you're going to be, you're going to look normal. Do you do lashes as well? I don't, okay. I don't specialize in lashes. Um, it's very tedious work for me. Mm -hmm. um, I feel like waxing is something that I can do within 15, 10 minutes and you're out the door. Okay. Jeez, so just it's easy for me. Yeah. Oh yeah. So oh, yeah. do you plan to have that offered at your studio? Because I understand you said you do the waxing, your sister does nails. You know, just me thinking business-wise and growth-wise, what's, what's your plan for that? Like, is it just going to be you two, or do you plan to have employees that offer different um, services? Like, wh how, what's, what's up with that? Um, so right now it's me and my sister. Mm -hmm. Um, we do plan on hiring employees. She plans on hiring more nail techs. Um, mm -hmm. I do plan on hiring more waxers. I've thought about hiring, uh, lash techs, but because I see more volume and people in waxing, cause it's a lot faster. Mm -hmm. Um, it's easier to make money that way. Um, and training somebody doesn't take that long, you know? Um, I prefer hiring more waxers okay. versus, you know, something that's going to make me easy money because I do plan on branching off and, you know, you know, having locations in Miami, especially I travel to Miami a lot. So I definitely want, you know, I want to, I want to go where the market's booming. Mm -hmm. So I feel like waxing is, is one of, you know, laser hair removal, yep. waxing. Those are like the top things right now. So let's talk pricing. What, what does that cost a woman? Um, it depends on the person, if they're, you know, self-employed or if you go to an actual location or a franchise, um, usually a typical wax can range from 40 to $80. Okay. Mm. Okay. Yeah. I got a wild card question for you. Okay. What is the weirdest reaction you got from somebody or the funniest story that you've got in regards to someone receiving a wax? Like, what did they do? What do they do? Oh, man, I have. Because I've, I've tried it. Why y'all look at me like Wait that? Wait a minute, what? Listen, I manscaped, so. <laughs> okay. Yes, I wait, manscaped. Wait, wait. But you said you tried yeah, waxing? Yeah, I tried it. I tried waxing to see what, what like, was. Like you did it? No, I had it waxed. Oh, so you went to like <laughs> a studio. I, I, I went to a place. And you laid down and. No, I didn't do no goddamn butterfly, none of that. I just. Man, you had your legs spread. No, I didn't have my legs spread. I had them hey, straight. Hey, and I had my fist like this. I did hey, it like a man. Yo. But when I tell you, if y'all ever seen 40 year old version, you seen 40 year old version? Yeah. yeah. Every single strip, I was like that motherfucker. Like, ah! Shit, what the fuck, bro? God damn, please, please, Jesus, get me off this table. Listen, <laughs> I've, I've actually serious. had women like that, which which is funny. Does anybody like back out like halfway through? Like they they like, nah, I can't take this no more. Um, yeah. I've only had one person ever do that to me. And it was actually when I was working, uh, you know, one of the European wax centers. It wasn't like in my salon. Um, and she was, a uh, she was doing body built, you know, bodybuilding or body lifting competition. Mm -hmm. And after the third strip, she really couldn't hang. She paid, mm. she paid, but she just, she was like, you know what? Thank you. I appreciate it. I tried it. I'm good. I'm going to stick to shaving. Anybody ever fought? Huh? <laughs> <laughs> yes. I can see somebody oh. getting a Brazilian yes. and just. <laughs> <laughs> Um, <laughs> yes, that's happened a, uh, a few times. I don't do? say, 
I don't say anything. I just I just keep talking. You don't laugh. I would have laughed. No, I would have laughed. <laughs> oh no, there's no way I'm, I would be able to hold it. Again. No, no, no. I'm, <laughs> I'm a really good talker. I just keep talking and talking and pretend like I never even heard it because it's gonna make somebody more embarrassed. You know, you just never. You know, I want to. I want to see you again. I don't want you to feel embarrassed and not come back. I'm gonna make them laugh. Though I think that's yeah. Something. That's on you laughing. Yeah. I've had girls. I mean, if it's stank, See, I, again, I don't, I don't say none. I'm, I'm really good about playing it off. I've been doing this for a long time. I've had girls that they feel it coming, and then they're like, wait, give me a second. And I'm like, oh, wait, what's going on? And they're like, wait, hold on. I feel like I'm going to fart. And I'm like, oh, got it. And we laugh about it. But okay. then there's some girls that, they, you know, sometimes when you're doing the butt strip and their legs are up or whatever the case is, you know, I just, I'm I keep myself. talking. It's just pow. Yeah, yeah, it's just, Probably it's not in true. my face, you know, but it's, 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 it's close. Feeling rushed. Do you like... <laughs> I ain't gonna say it. So, like, do you hold your cheeks together? But hold on, y'all tried to play me. So, y'all telling me y'all don't manscape? Oh no, no, I, I just never been waxed. Yeah, I never waxed them. So, would you try? I, I don't I think don't so. I no, don't, I don't mm. think that's nah. Mm -mm. Well, we talk about hey, supporting. I got the manscape kit. Manscape, I love me. Oh, the little the, the sponsorships. Yeah. But yeah, yeah, I got that it. makes sense because yeah. the Andes, man, I done had a. Ooh. Oh, you be getting nicked. Huh? I done nicked myself yeah, a couple times, and I'm see like, her? man, yeah, listen, man, manscape, you ain't got to worry about that. Mm. Okay. But but anyway, all right. So back to the <laughs> topic at hand. At hand. <laughs> um, so like triple threat, right? So like one of our slogans is, "There's more than one way to get it," right? So, in today's world, multiple streams of income is important. Mm -hmm. So, outside of, es is it esthetician? Is that the right term? Yes, esthetician. Okay, so, what are your, what are your streams of income? How do you so, maintain your lifestyle? Yes, so I also do OnlyFans. Um, I've been doing it for around, I want to say eight, nine months now. Um, it's a pretty open platform. You know, you can, you can actually do whatever you want in there. Um, it doesn't necessarily have to be porn. It doesn't have to be like nudity. It doesn't have to be anything super crazy. Um, you know, like your subscribers don't really know what they're getting into mm -hmm. until they subscribe. And if they actually support you and like your personality and everything in between, they're going to keep paying. Um, OnlyFans is something that I definitely, when the pandemic hit, um, because it did affect my business, mm -hmm. it was something that, you know, I definitely jumped on. Mm -hmm. And ever since it stuck. You, mm. you do feet pictures? I do send some feet pictures. I do have <laughs> fans that love my feet and I don't, <laughs> you know, they, Yo, I never realized how many dudes is like into that. They're really into it. And you know what? Aside from feet pictures, a lot of guys love soul pictures, like the soles soul? of your feet. What? Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Whoa. They just want to see the soles of your feet. Some guys ask you to like rub the soles of your feet or whatever. Like there, there's a market for everything. Honestly, well, that is, is there wild, women like that? bro? They like like men's feet. I like, don't uh, know. Like, <laughs> like, <laughs> you know <laughs> I don't know. You know, I personally oh, have shit. never ever heard any of my girlfriends, even the girlfriends that I have that also do OnlyFans, mm -hmm. they've never ever mentioned subscribing to a, a, a guy that does OnlyFans. You know, so I had this idea, right? Because OnlyFans, I feel like, has a lot of room for growth because everybody looks at OnlyFans and they think like porn, sex, mm -hmm. all the <coughs> craziness. So I brought up the idea because I, oh, uh, a friend of mine is a personal trainer. Mm -hmm. I said, yo, start an OnlyFans and you just do train, you do workouts. With your shirt off. You put your little baby oil on. Do workouts with your shirt off. Because you got to think. You just said you didn't know or your friends didn't know of any men that were like on OnlyFans like that. Mm -hmm. But women have those urges too. They want to see that type shit too. And I think women are more willing to pay for and, it. Because my understanding yes, is male strippers make way more money than women strippers. Or female strippers. That's what I heard. Yeah. I mean, probably. 
honestly, I think it's more fun. Um, if a man has a pretty solid platform and he has a pretty like, you know, ongoing personality that obviously, you know, not just women, but in general, like everybody, you know, kind of like gravitate towards you, you know, like, you, you know, when somebody has a really good aura, you know, um, they could definitely make a killing out of it. I've had girlfriends even that do fitness and they wanted to do only fans. They've come to me to ask me, Hey, you know, I kind of want to do only fans and I, I want to sell my workouts like, you know, for $10 a month. Anybody can get on there, and especially all these females, and they can see all my videos, what I eat, everything. I can break everything down right. versus, you know, being on a strict program and having individual people that I have to email and set their, you know. So, um, like I said, I, I feel like it's, it's pretty open for everybody. It really just depends on how you're going to market yourself, you know, if you have a pretty solid following and, you know, what you're going to do on there. So I'm going to ask you a weird question, right? Mm -hmm. Has there ever been a weird request like, I'm going to keep it PG-13. Like, um, anybody ever request for you to sell them your used socks? Um, not my socks. Mm. I've had a lot of requests of men wanting to buy my used underwear. That's why I said PG-13. That's what I was really saying, yeah, but not really saying. It's, so. Yeah, I've had guys actually ask me, you know, can you, you know, I see you go to the gym a lot. You're always posting that you're at the gym. Can you, uh, you know wear these cute thongs or whatever, um, do a workout for an hour, and then can you send that to me? I haven't personally done it because I think that's kind of gross. What's the highest bid? <laughs> I don't know because I haven't really Everybody done it. Everybody got a number. Right. What's that number? <laughs> right. Tell what you what, what if somebody number, offered what you $1,000? Somebody said. I actually never entertained it. I'm just like, no, I don't do that. Because listen, <laughs> Triple Threat <laughs> will number. sell you our socks. You what get number, all three of our socks for $19.99. Oh, my God. You know, I... Yeah. They, they might be watching. They they might. Hey, you Somebody might get a bag that. off this. Yeah. <laughs> twenty thousand. Twenty. See, that's twenty thousand. You probably gonna send two, huh? Maybe even five. Damn, oh, for twenty thousand. Well, yeah. <laughs> I'll throw. A, actually, I'll throw a six one right there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. She probably send the wax strip in there too. Oh, <laughs> wax strip for sure. Yeah, nah, that's not sure. Like, here's my hair, by the way. Right. <laughs> so, all right. OnlyFans is intriguing to me. Because it has that it has that stigma, that kind of negative stigma. Mm -hmm. But I see more than that. I see so many other ways that people can make money off of that doesn't yeah. have anything to do with sex or nudity or any vulgarity, anything like that. So I guess what's your opinion on I guess ways to better inform people of just what the platform has to offer? Um, honestly, just talking about it. You know, like when some of my clients find out that I have an OnlyFans, because sometimes they stumble up upon my personal Instagram, it's open to the public, mm -hmm. and then they see my pictures, they see the link, they see all that, and then they start to question, what exactly do you do on there, you know? You own a business, why are you on there? Well, it's another source of income. You know, at one point um, when I was really on it, um, you know, I was bringing home like around five, eight thousand a month extra. That's oh, that's, that's easy money. You think I'll be good on OnlyFans? <laughs> you see, I don't know. It depends. What are you going to do on right. OnlyFans? All right. Yeah. It, really, I need to find <laughs> the women that, that like the feet. See, I could do the feet. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I wear a size 11. Yeah, yeah, but you if you know, got that's, calluses that's actually, and stuff like that. That's my bad one, yeah, though. Yeah, yeah. Nah, that one, that one I, I broke my toe on that one. And then this, look, this one good, though. And then you, you sell them your used socks, bro. This one good. Yeah. Oh, yeah. $9.99 I got, I got a lot of socks. Yeah. I, yeah, mean, I like got I, the Nike dry fits, too, so they nice socks. You know, I do know some guys, you know, really cool guys that I know that, that actually do have OnlyFans. You know? Yeah, I'll, shout out to my, my homie, Bandman Kevo. I mean, he's making like a million a month off of that. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. There's a market for yeah. everything. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and that's what I think I want to get because I've had I've had a couple people that that work for me, um, you know, and different stuff. And I was trying to explain that and they always like, eh, nah, I ain't trying to. But it's like if you think about the bigger picture, mm -hmm. it's a big platform. Mm -hmm. People have to subscribe. Like you said, people don't even know until they subscribe. Yeah. So. Like I said, personal trainer. Personal trainer, I think, would be a go for anybody that's an actual personal trainer. 
they could I feel like they could do that. Um, but it's just getting people to think outside of the box and get rid of the um I guess being so worried about what everybody else thinks. Yeah. Uh honestly, like I said before, it's more of like I think people should be a little bit more open and talking about it. Mm-hmm. You know, like for example, if if you were to start OnlyFans and you wanted to do something in regards to, you know, information, like you do stocks or crypto and you have so many DMs of people asking you, oh, man, how do I get in it, blah, blah, blah. You know, you can create an OnlyFans, uh, OnlyFans uh, platform and promote it as such. Like, hey, I have an OnlyFans for people that, you know, want to be interested. I can show you my tricks, videos, you know, training and all that stuff for $10 a month. Here it is. You know, it's just honestly, I feel like that stigma can only be really taken down more of like if people are more open to it mm-hmm. and, you know, where people be more open minded about it. You know, it's another source of income. You know, people don't get rich off just doing one thing. I mean, sometimes. Yeah. But, you know, usually a lot of millionaires that, you know, they usually have multiple streams of income. Right. There's girls that I personally know that make 60, 70, even 100,000 a month just off OnlyFans. So it's a, it's a pretty open market. It's a, it's, it's, you just have to take advantage. I feel like women especially, you know, should take advantage of it. No, it's very empowering. It really no, is. Let me ask you this. So let's say you're on the, you're, you're I would say dating, right? Oh no. I think you about to ask the that question. Was I was question. getting ready to ask. <laughs> that was I question. knew this. Cause I was about to be like, Hey babe, look, we're going to work on your only fans, but nah, I could, I, yeah, mm, well, it, it, I can't do it. That's, first off, is that something that you would tell, you know, the man up front? Um, yes. And what if he, you know, was like, Hey, I really don't want you to do that. Would you be kind of like, listen, I'm already doing that before. You got to yeah. accept me mm-hmm. as I am. Type of, yeah. So I'll say this. Um, I'm single right now. So I have been on dates with guys. And, you know, obviously, you know, guys, you know, we, we, you know, before we go on a date with somebody, sometimes you stalk their like page and stuff like mm-hmm. that. Guys bring it up. They usually do. Mm-hmm. You know, they always bring it up in conversation. A lot of the times, honestly, it's just curiosity. Like, what made you want to do it? Why do you do it? You know, if you, if you, you know, if you have a business and, you know, and, and, I, and I, I'm very upfront about it. I tell them, you know, this is what I do. If you want to see it, you want to see what I post. It's very like, you know, it's normal. It's nothing crazy. Um, it's really just up to them. You know, if they're secure as a man and they're okay with it, that, you know, it's, it's, you're laying it out on the table. Yeah. You know, this yeah. is what it is, you know. Um, but I've had guys also say, you know, I don't know if I'll be comfortable dating a girl that, you know, my homie subscribed to and, you know, now I'm out with this girl and then like everybody's seen the goods or they seen this and not feel uncomfortable, you know, that you're going to have some of those guys like that too. So honestly, it really just depends on how, you know, comfortable the other person is, you know, I can't change someone's view, but at the same time, like, you know, I just met you. I'm not going to stop my bag because you feel some type of way. Mm-hmm. It's a little different if we start dating mm-hmm. and it's progressed, you know, and over time, because sometimes people change, you know, what they want to do. Yeah. Yeah. You know, when you're in a relationship and you're really in love and you're comfortable, you know, you stop going out as much, mm-hmm. you know, and then, you know, some girls, they're like on OnlyFans, but then they're like, man, I don't want to do this no more. I'm comfortable where I'm at. You know, I'm happy in my relationship. I don't want to cause tension or whatever the case is. It really just depends on a lot of factors it depends on you know their comfort level and how comfortable they are with that you know like some men date strippers and they're okay with that so let's say you got married would you stop it then if he asked you to stop it this is your husband i probably would honestly Mm. you know if 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 i got if i progress in a relationship where i got married Mm -hmm. i obviously have somebody who's providing Mm -hmm. as well you know i have my own business you know there's no need for you know the extra stuff yeah, it's extra money, but it really just depends on, again, if I were to be married and that person, you know, expresses their, you know, discomfort at that point or, you know, in general, then, yeah, that's something that, you know, I wouldn't mind depending on the circumstances. Well, let me ask you this. So how would you feel if he has OnlyFans and he's showing certain stuff that you were dating? See, I... Like I said, it just, it, it, no, 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 hold on, hold on, hold on. I think that's a great question. Hold on. And here, 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 let me tell you why I think that's a great question, right? Because it's a great question. Here's the reason why it's a great question. Because a lot of women mm-hmm. are very comfortable with wearing thong bikinis. Yes. Or going topless on the beach. 
I wouldn't do that, but yes. But let them man <laughs> walk around in like gray sweatpants exactly. out the door. Exactly. Like, let going? them pull up there. Um, <laughs> where you can see that thing, they're yeah, going to be like, yo, I get it. Hey, okay, put that away. Me. So, yeah. okay. So, I'll say this. Um, I've dated, uh, you know, somebody who was a photographer, mm-hmm. right? I knew that that was, you know, and it was, you know, that's what they like to do. They shot women, blah, blah, blah. They were very upfront about it. So, you know, if you walk into something and you know what it is, you know, don't expect anything less, right. you know? Now, if, if that is compromised, you know, where you get caught lying or you get caught doing something you're not supposed to do, then that's a little bit different. That changes the dynamic of like the comfort. You know, like now I don't feel comfortable you doing this. Um, so, like I said, it's very situational. So if I meet a guy that has an OnlyFans and he's, you know, doing all this stuff and that's how I meet him, he's very upfront about it, he's honest, um, then that's up to my choice to decide if I want to, you know, accept it or not, you know, and then move forward from that. But if I do accept it, you know, I can't just, you know, tell somebody, hey, I need you to stop doing this. If that's yeah. their, their form of income or if it makes them a lot of money or whatever the case is, you know? So, it, like I said, it's very situational and it really just depends if is that person doing it beforehand? Are they going to do it during the relationship? Did it start during the relationship or whatever the case is? It really just depends, like, you know, how, and also the trust in the relationship. Like, Yeah, because I, I think um, some people have said, like, if the person doesn't get jealous, they don't like you enough or something like that. Some people have thrown that around. And some people will say, well, that person is not secure. So it's like y'all both are doing it, you know, it's almost like who's going to tap out first? Who's going to get, you know, a little jealous first or whatnot? Yeah. I'm not going to lie. I love a jealous woman. I love it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> he likes the crazy ones. I love it. Because I don't, I don't see it as you being insecure. I see it as you look at me as I'm yours. It's true. It's true. You know, you have to kind of have a little bit of balance of everything. Yeah. Um. Like I said, like, it, it really just depends. Like, you know, like, you know, everybody, you know, you've dated probably different types of women. So have you, so have you. So like, it really just depends on the dynamic of how you, how the chemistry is between you guys, yeah. you know, how jealous or how, you know, insecure the, you know, you never know what someone's going to bring to the table, mm-hmm. you know? So everybody, everybody has, you know, their insecurities. Everybody has their, you know, little toxic traits. So each person that you date that's new, you know, it's going to either bring you a little bit off balance, balance you or whatever. So you kind of have to like figure that out a little bit to see what you can not get away with, but see how it works with certain people because everybody's different. Right. So and that's that's my biggest thing. It's literally everybody's different. So it's, it's really, really honestly, truly situational. Hmm, yeah. You. What are your toxic traits? <laughs> <laughs> My toxic trains. People want to mm, know. Do they really? Mm-hmm. Um, I am very observant. <laughs> so I know. Does that mean you go I, through phones? Is that observant oh, like that? <clears throat> no, 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 no. Oh, okay. One thing I've never done is go through a man's phone. Oh, no. I, I'll say that. Now, if it's like right there and I see it, and I see it, I'm gonna be like, "Oh, what's that?" Um, but I've never ever had the urge to go through someone's phone or get their password. Even if I had it, like I've, I've had people's passwords and stuff like that. I'd never, you know, had that urge, you know, it, it was just more like a trust thing at that point, yeah. mm-hmm. you know? Um, mm. So observe yeah, it. How is that? Mm. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I want to, I, I want to like tap so, into that. Okay, so. I want to tap into that because that is a question that came up <laughs> yesterday at press play. What? Oh, Wednesday. It was the the going through the phone thing. You know oh, what? What? And I think we all let's go Auburn around the uh, Auburn Bush to, <laughs> to to talk about that. So, how do you feel about that? How do you feel about? Well, first, first before we ask that, uh-huh. explain the observer, and then we're gonna yeah, come yeah. back. To yeah, yeah, okay, yeah, yeah, observing. yeah. Um, so I pick up very quickly on people like how they are, their traits, mm-hmm. and like. You know, little things that they do that are very subtle. Um, and it bothers me when that, dyna- that that little things change. And I'm the first to, like, pick up on it and ask about it. So, basically, I'll call you out on your bullshit right then and there. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm not going to wait. Yeah, inconsistency yeah. is something that I absolutely hate in men. Mm-hmm. Um, and liars. That's the biggest thing. It's the one thing that's just going to, you know. Yeah. That makes sense. I feel like that's a... Pretty common thing. 
Yeah. Um, I don't, is that toxic though? See, I, I, I just, I don't, I waste no time. I waste no time. We don't, we don't hold back on the triple threat podcast. No, I wait. I'm not, not, I'm not, that's one of the things. We, okay. One of the things. I didn't say it was the only thing. Put all your stuff (laughs) on. But, but when you said, so is it that you just don't have patience at all? You just like, I really don't. So you like, you got to go. Yeah, I really don't. I don't have, I'll call you out on your bullshit the first day if I need to, Mm -hmm. you know? Or sometimes, like, I, I tend to observe mm-hmm. and observe, even though, and you know, I pick up on a little things, and maybe by the third or second time, I'm like, okay, so this is, and I'll tell you, I'll tell you straight up, I'm like, hey, listen, uh, so uh, this is what I got from you, mm. you know? And, yeah, I, I have zero patience. I don't tolerate anything anymore. Are you Sagittarius? <laughs> I'm a Libra. Oh, shoot. I say this. You sound like me, being <laughs> just being very no. uh, up front, you know what I'm saying? That, nah, that's, I mean, that's kind of how I am. Yeah, and people think I'm an asshole for it. He's kind of That's what I sure. get. They're like, oh, you're, you're an asshole but, or but you're it's this. Just like, I feel like I'm just not for everybody. No. You know, either, I'm not for everybody either. 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 With a, you know, <laughs> I get it. I mean, I can make a judge. I'm not going to say I'm perfect and I'm just like stuck in this way. But my general makeup is I'm, I'm going to tell you what it is. I'm not good at sugarcoating. So. Super direct. I come off as an asshole. Yeah, I get that a lot too. But you know, I I I think that's a problem with our society. Nobody likes the truth. No, they don't. Yeah. Every, they don't. Yeah, a lot of fakeness going around here. So you know, everybody Shut likes up. being sugar coated and. Yeah, I'm not. I, I don't know how to do that. So yeah, no, I uh, I honestly, I can honest. I know a lot of people, and people who I call really, really close is very like under five people. To be honest with you. You know, like I know when I know a lot of people and I know when things are off with you. So if I haven't seen you, I haven't seen you post. I haven't seen, you know, I'm the first one to be like, hey, how was your flight? Or, hey, how's it going? You know, you know, how's your dog or how's your grandma? I heard she was in the hospital or whatever. I'm the first to always keep, you know, tabs on people, not tabs, but, you know, keep in touch with them. No. Nobody does it for me, you know, and that's just the reality of. I'm bad. I'm bad, bad I I'm, I'm bad at that. I am bad. I'm completely bad at that. I, I am. But but see, it's not it's not that I don't care. Yeah. For me, it's like like I could not talk to you for a month. And then right. we talk and then it's like, all right, I just talked to you yesterday. You it's also social media. If you follow somebody in the city post every day, you're like, I know what you're I, doing. Yeah. 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 Like maybe, you kinda like, get a general idea. Too. Yeah. Yeah. But like I don't have to I don't have anybody that I have to talk to like every like even my mom. Like I I use that example when, like, I've had the issue where females come to me and be like, you, you didn't, you didn't check on me and blah, blah. I'm just not built like that to where I got to be up your ass every day. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I'm not up people's ass every day, but you know, I, yeah. I, like I said, I'm very observant. Yeah. So like, I, I notice a lot of things. So if yeah. my friend's telling me like just the other day, she was like, Hey, I'm going to go to Miami and going for one day and then I'm going to come back. Um, I remember when she was going to leave, you know, when she was coming back. And I, after a couple of days, I asked her, I was like, hey, how was your flight? You know, how was your trip to Miami? Was it good? Was it, you know, like, I'm just, I, I take little, not notes, but, you know, I'm just really good no, at, like, good, picking though. up little yeah, things, that's, you yeah, know? That's real good. It, that's it is a good feeling to have somebody that is like that. Yeah. yeah I'm, I'm just not good at it. <laughs> it's and not- I try to let people know, like, it ain't. I know. Because Chris asked me when I was coming back from the DR, Vic ain't asked me shit. <laughs> yeah, we was in the group chat. <laughs> we can't ask group me chat. shit. <laughs> he they, should add. Nah, nah, I'm, nah just I'm, I'm, I'm really not good at that. But I, me and him are so much alike, so that's why I like I understand him. Yeah, I'm I've gotten one. better because I've got older, but I'm like yeah. same way. I've, I'll, I'll get I, better. Like I'm not saying I'm just stuck in my way, but that's just yeah. Me. Right, I got to Yeah, no, I'm, I gotta I'm, learn. The, I'm the it wild doesn't make card. you a bad guy, you know. Uh, I'm, a, Every, I'm a work in progress. <laughs> yeah, everybody is, progress. you know. Every, like I said, everybody, everybody's a work in progress. Everybody's different, though. Mm-hmm. You know, like like I said, I made it very clear. I'm a very observant person, so it's not like I'm on people's asses or anything like that. It's mm-hmm. just like if I know how you are, or if you met, or if you know, well, technically, yeah, if you <laughs> technically <laughs> speaking, yes. Yeah, you really um, are on people's asses. Yeah, yeah, I'm all up in that shit, Parts but, <laughs> but yeah, figuratively, no, I'm just, I, you know, I, I'm very observant. I, I listen, you know. Mm-hmm. So when people tell me certain things, you know, it's really easy for me to remember sometimes and be like, hey, you know, like 
haven't heard from you. I haven't seen you post in, in a little bit. How's it going or whatever the case is. How's your dog? I, I saw he was at the vet. Is he okay? Or, you know, it's just little things that people forget that matter. Right. You know, I, sure. like recently I had, a, I actually had one of my friends whose dog, you know, is in the, is in the vet. I haven't heard from him yet. And I was the, one of the first people to be like, Hey, I hope really, I pray that your dog is, is, you know, he's good. Like it sucks. You know, I know how fur babies are to us. Like they're, they mean everything. He's like, Oh my God, you're like, not even my close friend. He responded. He's like, Hey, not even my close friends even reached out to me. Thank you. I just met you like two months ago, you know, mm. and we were cool. And I haven't seen him post since. For two weeks and i recently messaged him i'm like hey i haven't seen you post at all how's your dog doing right you know like i don't know if you know it's just That's little things that matter you know to yeah, people absolutely. that it, it helps so all right when people look at you what is it that you want them to know about you as a person like who you are somebody doesn't know you they just see you for the first time they just mean you what is it that you want them to know the one thing that I want them to know, I'm actually, uh, I don't know, I'm an open book. Person. Like, I'm really oh, friendly, you know? I think people get, like, they see this, like, Latina girl all tatted up and whatnot, and or they see pictures on Instagram, and they, they completely, a lot of people that I meet, they have this, like, different, like, view of me. And when they get to know me, they're like, holy shit, like, you're really funny. Like, you're really cool. Like, you're down to earth. Like... You know, you're, you're not, you don't look, you know, you don't look like the typical angry Latina that, you know, portrays online or, you know, sometimes I have to post a certain way. Um, so sometimes it makes me look a little bit stuck up or, you know, bougie or whatever, you know, like people have all these different assumptions based on your social media alone. So the one thing that I definitely want people to know is like, you know, don't judge me, mm -hmm. you know, come up to me, get to know me. Like I'm actually very shy. Like a very shy person but when people talk to me and you know sometimes even it takes me for me to get a little bit you know lit to start talking more but yeah. i'm a very like i'm a very relaxed person like i'm down for whatever my friends usually call me and they're like hey you want to do this i'm like at what time unless i have something else you know that i'm doing like i'm always i'm always the ride or die you know i'm always the down to friend you know that they call or whatever the case is you know so it's just so with that said let people know who the real Ange is like you know Tell them what you like to do in your free time. You know, I've known you for years. Yeah. So I know who you really are. Yeah. You're crazy and funny as hell, but, <laughs> you know, but like I said, let them know who you are, really are. What do you like to do in your free time and, and stuff like that? So, uh, so or, I, do you want me to tell you now? Or? Yeah, tell them. Look into the camera. Like, so, oh, what yeah, this? I, uh, everybody sees, you know, my little book collection. Mm -hmm. I have like over a hundred books. Mm -hmm. um, I'm really into philosophy, which is, I didn't even know what that was until like people were like, oh, you're, you, you're, you're very, you know, you're into philosophy, like the way you talk. And, you know, when you talk about certain subjects and stuff like that. And I didn't really know what that was, but I do have over a hundred books. I love reading. Um, I'm always learning something new. I love self-improvement books, you know. Um, talk then. Huh? Yeah, a lot of books too. I, yeah. Yeah, I, I, I might have more books than you, but yeah, you I know. feel you. I got about we four. Can compare, you, know? you know, it's just I have a small little <laughs> studio, okay, you know. Okay. So, right. you know, I gotta make room somehow. All but right, right. you know, it's it's growing. It's definitely growing. Um, yeah, I'm I'm a book nerd. I'm 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 all about it. I'm actually a very chill person. You know, I, I like to go to Barnes & Noble. I'm there, like, hours of my free time or I'm walking my dog at the beach. You know, I'm not really a typical party person. Like, you know, I do go out, I, you know, but it's mostly because a lot of my friends like to be social like that. They want to go out. They want to be social. So, you know, I join the bandwagon. But honestly, I'm a very relaxed person. Like, on my free time, I like to go to the gym, um, spend time with my dog. She loves to play all the time. And honestly, just read. I'm always learning something. I always want to learn something new. That's good. Good. I'm pretty sure um, when it comes to men, probably they probably like intimidated. Yeah, we were talking about that too. Like, um, oh, before we go there, oh, we gotta we gotta circle. Back we gotta to circle, back, gotta circle to back, to back to the question because I know where he's going. He's going at <laughs> yeah. You know when we work together, like the three of us. <laughs> yeah. We, but let's go back. We, we, okay, we okay. we're gonna circle back to the question. Okay. So, so again, you want to ask or you go want ahead. me to ask? Go ahead. All right. So. Last night at Press Play Wednesdays, which some of you may not know about, it is a um, grown and sexy game night that's held at the Sunset Lounge every other Wednesday. 
So pull up is fun. A lot of fun. But anyway, <laughs> there was a question asked about checking your significant other's phone. Mm. How do you feel about that? I personally don't like that. Mm -hmm. Have you done it? Mm. No. No? Mm. I think that's bullshit. Mm, not okay. I've never gone Ooh. through someone's phone. Wait, uh -huh. hold on. Let me yeah, see, it sounds hold like on, some mm, bullshit. Wait, hold on a second. Um, mm. I've never personally went through someone's phone. You know, I have seen things pop up on the phone uh -huh. where I. I saw it because, you know, sometimes you see emojis and you're like, well, who yeah. the fuck is so that? So they ain't have the privacy. So, so, yeah, so they didn't right, have so, no So the privacy. better question is, is that a red flag to you? Is a red flag someone checking your phone or the desire for you to check a phone? And I, I'll, let me give you my perspective yeah. on it. And then maybe we can we yeah. can go from there and you can see where I'm coming with it. OK, so. I can't say I think it's a good or bad thing. Mm -hmm. I'm kind of like right in the middle with it. And what I mean by that is I think that sometimes people have been through certain things in life where they have wholeheartedly trusted someone and they have seen things pop up on their phone, like you said, mm -hmm. that kind of had them go. Wait hmm, a second, this ain't right. Right. You know, which. When they see that phone, they see him texting. They see that big smile. Mm -hmm. They're kind of like, yeah, mm -hmm. you curiosity. know, curiosity. And I, I don't think that's necessarily a bad thing. I don't think it means that, you know, you're toxic. Mm -hmm. It does mean you're scarred. Yes. You know, there, there may have been something that happened in the previous relationship where you wholeheartedly trusted someone. And this new person may not have done anything wrong. But there are sometimes things that happen that will trigger a certain reaction. And does that mean you should take that person's phone and say, hey, let me go through it, yada, yada, yada. Let me look at it, you know. And personally, I'm the type of person now, before, nah, you ask me to look at my phone, whether I'm doing something or not, I'm going to be like, no. <laughs> but now I get it as I'm older and I understand that like, you know, the funniest thing is, is a guy said to me, when you're the, the gift and the curse about dating an older woman is the gift is the maturity. The curse is dealing with the scars from previous relationships. Mm -hmm. So with that said, now I'm more likely to say, hey, if there's something that you have questions about. And I don't have shit to hide. Sure. Here's yeah. what you need to see. You have a question about this? Look. Yeah, you're establishing a sense of security. Right. And I, I don't think that it's a bad thing to be upset with someone who's asking those questions because it's like at the end of the day, you, you kind of know what you're getting into when you're dealing with somebody. You know, yes. if, if you've had those conversations, you know the scars that they've had. And I think that as a man or woman, it is up to you to put the neosporin on those scars Mm -hmm. Even if you're like, yo, this is some bullshit. I didn't do any of this. I'm treating you like this, this, and this. It's still up to you. If you if you are invested that much in that relationship, like I feel like there's no such thing as, as beating a dead horse. If there's an issue that's unresolved or if this person continues to have questions about something, it's up to you to answer those questions. Even if you answered them a week ago, 10 weeks ago, for, you know, it's up to you to do that. You know what I'm saying? So that's my perspective on it. So back to you. What do you think about it? How do um, you feel about? I agree with you, actually. I, mm -hmm. I really do. Mm -hmm. um, I think initially, like if I just started seeing somebody yeah. and they want to go through my phone, it's kind of like, OK, wait a second. Right. I you just know, met you. Like, I just met you. <laughs> like, I haven't given you a reason to. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Um, I have definitely been in multiple times in situations where it's happened to me, where I saw something and I'm like, oh, you know, like, I didn't have reasons to before, but now I'm like, what's up with that? Yeah. You know? Um, and like I said, just for my sense of security, like, I didn't like that I saw something and, you know, I get that. Um, 
but yeah if it's like something new that you know just happened no i'm not gonna give you my phone or that's you're, you're kind of invading my privacy and like you really don't trust me you know that's something that we build together yeah you know unless i've broken that trust that's different um i've been scarred heavily we've all have been scarred we've all been in relationships we've all done things to people that we're not proud of and vice versa um but i've learned to like you know heal from it move on and not have these super high walls for the next person you know, there's no point in making some, you know, the next person that's willing to love you. And, you know, there's no point in having these high walls when, you know, especially with somebody, you know, that's trying to love you and trying to show you something different, you know, because you're just making it, you're just making it difficult for them. Mm-hmm. And now they're, they're, they're facing these battles that somebody else caused, right. yeah. you know, right. now they're healing these scars that somebody else caused. And if that's mm-hmm. the case, then maybe you just need to focus a little bit more on yourself and right. heal yourself first. Mm-hmm. Cause not everybody deserves that. You know, that was one of the biggest things that I learned from, you know, my, my, my last relationship was, you know, don't, don't jump into the next thing just yet. Give yourself some time, Mm -hmm. you know, work on yourself, work on, work on, you know, my toxic traits, Mm -hmm. you know, you know, analyze what went wrong on both ends, but then figure out like, you know, you know, cause you know, when two people go at it, it's like, well, you do this and you do that. Okay. Well, this person said I do this. So maybe I need to work on that. Or, you know, like maybe I'm emotionally unbalanced. Maybe I need to start working on my, you know, meditate a little bit. You know, let me, let me, let me control my emotions a little bit better. You know, what's driving me crazy or what, what made me this way? Yeah. You know, like heal, heal. So the other person doesn't have to deal with that, Right. you know? So now, you know, yeah, I'm single. Don't get me wrong, but I've been on dates and stuff like that. And now it's so easy for me to like date certain men and immediately see, like I said, this is like so close to me and immediately see, um, like I said, I'm very observant. So I'm like, I can tell like when somebody has been scarred, if their guard is like down or is it super high or, you know, something that their ex did cheating or whatever the case is like, just based off them talking about their past or how they are with people or little things that they do, you know, it's just, it's so easy to see when someone's like, you know, but would you, would you walk away from someone in that situation or try to help them through that if you see the value in that person i would definitely if i see the value in somebody a hundred percent i would try to like you know you can you can always sometimes other people heal people yeah, you know, yeah that's true i know, agree with not that not all right. the times it happens all by yourself right. yeah. you know a lot of like i want to say 80 percent of healing does require isolation it requires more deep work in yourself you know it requires you to stay away from everybody and really really focus on you whether it's going to therapy, you know, doing yoga, meditation, mm-hmm. reading something, you know, just really like f- trying to figure out what's wrong with you or what what made you this way. Gotcha. But sometimes the right person could come at the wrong time and they can help you see that. Yep. You know, they can help you see the the beauty in you that you haven't seen. You know, you can yeah. tell yourself a hundred times that you're ugly in the mirror and that other person's going to be like, you're the most beautiful thing I've ever seen in my, in my life. Facts. And they can change that for you. Mm-hmm. So it's like I said, it's just it's very situational. It really, really depends. So would you say that it's hard in these times to date? Oh, a hundred percent. A hundred percent with no yeah. doubt. Yeah. It's so hard. Oh my god. It's even hard for me. Yeah. It's so hard for me, even to date, you know, for anybody. You know, social media made it so easy for people to just find your replacement like that. Right. You know? Yeah. It, it's 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 insane and you know obviously my my social media is catered a certain way because of what i do mm-hmm. and you know i see all these married guys or guys with girlfriends and they're all up in my shit and i'm just like man mm-hmm. why you know like it's okay to see with your eyes but like you gotta like also respond with it too you know like yeah. type it and yeah social media made it very 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 hard today a hundred percent and not just that for guys too like or, or for women too like I always run into the same, the same cycle every single time. A guy chases me down and they're like, I want to go on a date with you. I want to I go on a date with you. Go on a date with them. And then everything's fine and normal and whatever. And they're always, you know, giving you a spiel. Not every guy, but, you know, the ones that I've experienced, you know, they're, you know, they have their shit together. Good looking men, you know, they always want this in a woman. They're like, oh, you're so beautiful. You're this or whatever. You think you're funny. You know, you have it all like whatever. Why are you still single? And then when it progresses, they're kind of like, you know what? I'm just not ready to settle down, you know, because there's just so many fishes out there that they can just like keep, you know, going after, Yeah. you know, they experience you and then they're ready for the next person, the next mm-hmm. experience. And it's like a never ending toxic cycle. Yeah. 
Yeah, so sure. yeah, just yeah, yeah, dating in this generation and this time it's is hard. awful. It is wild. It's awful. Yeah, I, I'm so I always talk about I think it was easier in traditional times back in the day mm-hmm. because men needed women. And women needed men. Mm-hmm. You know, it was like more of a necessity of I need you to take care of the household and the kids because I'm out working. Right. The women is like, yo, I need you to pay the bills mm-hmm. because I'm taking care of the kids. Yeah. It was a, it was a healthy balance. Yeah. Yeah, it was a healthy yeah. balance. I think now it just got to that point where it's like women's like, well, I don't, I don't really need you either. I can get my own money. Yeah, I can have you in rotation with 10 other dudes. Yeah. You know, I make my own money. Right. Nobody tells me what to do. I get flown out everywhere, you know, like, you know, and there's some women that are okay with that. And they're happy with that. But the truth of the matter is, is eventually like that gets boring. It gets, it gets played out. And then by the time you're ready to settle down and actually want to have something real with somebody and build a family. The men are old as hell. (laughs) It's just, everybody's already, everybody's like in different, like, you know, Mm -hmm. timelines with their lives. And it's just like, and it makes it, and it makes the circle a lot smaller. Yeah. Yeah. So, so what would you say your views are as far as like relationships? Because you have like women are women are hustlers now. Mm-hmm. so <laughs> they don't they don't necessarily need men to take care of them mm-hmm. a lot of them still want it mm-hmm. what is your take on like i don't like to say roles in a relationship but i guess it's, it it kind of is like i'll say this um if one of my biggest things with men, I guess, when it comes to dating is I need the biggest thing is a man to know what he wants. Do you truly know what you want? Because I know what I want. So if I'm telling you what I want, don't don't lie to me, you know, just because you want to experience me or just have me for a little bit. No, no, no. <laughs> Tell me what you want, what you really want. And if you don't know, make it clear, because that gives me an idea of like, OK, then I don't want to waste my time, you know, or, or let's see where it goes. You know, but my, my, I guess, uh, role, I feel like if I find a man that knows what he wants and, you know, he's providing what he needs to and makes me feel secure as a woman, I will be submissive, you know, as a woman. Like, I'm not going to, you know, like, I feel like women and men play different roles. Like, a man is supposed to be the head of the household. Mm -hmm. not saying that the women should, you know. Nah, you right. work from home or anything like that. You know, a woman can still have her own business and everything like that. But when a woman feels secure in her relationship with her man and he's providing and he's doing all the right things for her, I guarantee you 100 percent she will be submissive and it, there will be a healthy balance how it should be. You know, a woman plays her role. A man plays his role if it's done right. Yeah, mm-hmm. no, I, I agree. One thousand um, percent. The question is, fellas. When it comes to too much fish in the sea, mm. how do we, as men, mm-hmm. uh, eliminate that? Easy. Some fish ain't good fish. Look, you, you ever hear somebody, uh, Some a, a real fisherman, tell them. you that's a that's a a, a bad fish? Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. You got to understand that as a man, mm-hmm. not all fish are good fish. Very true. Okay, so, <laughs> so <laughs> oh, shit. that that is true. Yeah. So, but how you know it ain't bad if you don't taste it? So what? You can't taste everything. So 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 <laughs> yeah. this is That's this the is question. the question I got in response to that. Yeah. Can one person can can one woman uh-huh. satisfy me? Like, can one woman fully? Completely, like, check all the boxes and fully satisfied. Right, like, 85%. I think, I think it has to be a woman that wants to. Because there's a lot of selfish-ass women out here who don't have that mindset or who have the mindset of, oh, he ain't put a ring on my finger, so da-da-da. You know, versus, like, a lot of women saying that they, they, they look at it as he hasn't earned... Right. For me to be this way with him. Yeah. And men look at it as you haven't shown me a reason to be this way for you. 
if you get what I'm saying, what I mean by that is like, again, a lot of women look at it as, all right, well, I ain't married to him yet, so I'm not going to do this, this, and that. And a lot of men are like, well, she ain't showing me this, this, and this, so I ain't going to marry her. I, but I think it's, it's sometimes different. So I use that you're Latina, right? Mm-hmm. I read this book about it. So um, there's one book. What's the name of the book? I'm kidding. I'm kidding. We've been drinking. Know, Just tell us, tell us, what, it, the tell us what it says. We'll it get to house. it. We'll get to nah, it. But so this book, it talks about why men want tons of fish. Right, it kind of mm-hmm. breaks it down. Mm-hmm. Um, shout out to Nipsey Hussle because he was actually the one that referred the book. Um, Lauren London got it for him. It's a very good book. So, anyways, uh, it talks about why men want so many different women. It has nothing to do with it has to do with sex, but not really. It's more so energy. So, let's say, for instance, as a Latina, you come, you got this. Not saying you're a Latina, so please don't kill me. But y'all bring a spicy very sensual sexual energy yeah which is what men love Mm -hmm. but let's say we had a bad day at work Mm -hmm. stuff just got heated you know what i'm saying we didn't lost some money stuff like that we don't want all of that right now we don't want the sensual touching all that we like we just kind of want to be left alone Mm -hmm. and it's a situation where you may come home and you used to doing that with your guy and he's like, need some space. And you might not catch on to it. But let's say your homegirl comes over. And she's just the ear. Just to lend to him. And you didn't get it in that moment. So now a man is confused. Because he's like, how's her homegirl get it? But she don't. Hmm. And so it's just a different energy that we need. It's not necessarily sex. It's the energy. And, and that's what I meant by like, can one woman really satisfied a man, and I'm not just talking sex. I'm talking like different aspects of the relationship. Because not all women are good listeners. <laughs> not all. I mean, that, I'm just giving an example. Damn. Not all women are good listeners. <laughs> Shit. I mean, it, I mean, it's like but. kind of like a vice versa kind of thing. Can a man really satisfy one for <laughs> two? Because but why do you? But okay, so. When you're decide, when you're making the decision, if you want to give your time to a man, mm-hmm. what is it that you're looking at to determine if you're gonna give him your time? Like in a relationship, like in your, let's just say a man approaches you, right? Right. So obviously we got the physical, right? Mm-hmm. So outside of that, the type of conversations you have, and mm-hmm. what makes you say, "All right, this is somebody that I want to." continue to and, and see where it goes honestly it's it's it depends on the way that they approach me you know it really does you know some men will introduce themselves and be like you know hey my name is so and so i think you're really beautiful like whatever then i've had guys that'd be like damn girl you fine blah, blah. you know you can kind of already tell how that's gonna go so if i have a guy that comes up to me and he's really you know respectful and you know talks to me now it's more of like an intellect kind of thing Mm -hmm. you know you can look good it doesn't matter but sometimes looks doesn't even matter it's more of like how you carry yourself you know it also depends like you know you got to get the basic questions out of the way like what's your name and are you from here and all that stuff to kind of like see where it's gonna go all right let me let me yeah just, let me cut out all the bullshit right? mm-hmm. thank you thank Please. you let me cut out all because that answer is a lot right, of bullshit so, yeah, check this out. so get in there so check this out all right so how let's much, say how much money do we got to make? Let's say you got <laughs> let's say you got two guys that approach you, right? Okay. They both approach you. They respect everything you just said. Uh huh. Intellect is there. One makes, we'll just say six figures. One makes fifty thousand a year. Who you going with and why? Hmm. Yeah, oh, you got to think now. too long. Yeah. Come on now. That means you about to give come us a, a, a no, political no, no, no. answer. I, I, come on now. I've been in situations like oh, this. Oh, okay, shit. So who you going with? So but what you, you going know, with? Like, I, I've been in situations where I've met guys that made like 50, 40K a year, and they're amazing fucking dudes. We're talking know? about the same guy. Two of the same guys. Yeah, but they're not really the same. They're really not, though. They're, they're they, really not the same. Okay, that's a good they point. The financial side is no, 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 different. No, no, no. They approach you the same right, way. Right, but who they are is really different. That's okay, 
So that's what matters. But but you're going off what you just explained was how they approach you, right? How they carry themselves. Okay, hundred percent. Because so so then, which one are you going at? Which one are you paying more? It's, 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 it's still very real. like it's, it's six figures. No, no, no. Because no, no. I, listen, I, and I, this is nothing it's wrong okay. with that. It's because oh, that's reality. Let's, let's, oh wait, 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 wait. All right, hold on. Let's let's give her a chance oh, to yeah. answer because we bombarded. Here's the reason why I can't always look about how much they make. Now, mm-hmm. if you make fifty thousand dollars a year and you make six figures, right? Mm-hmm. Why well, I gotta make the fifty thousand? Right, no, I'll fuck <laughs> but if you make fifty thousand over uh, a year and he makes six figures yeah. and you guys approach me the same way, whatever, right? Mm-hmm. It doesn't really matter because if you pay your bills and you're set, not not that you're set, but if you take care of what you need to take care of, right? Mm-hmm. That's what really matters. Mm-hmm. At the end of the day, I'm not gonna look forward to like, oh, how much money is in your pocket? Mm-hmm. Because I've met men and I've dated men that had lots of money. And they were complete dickheads. And they were very shallow. They were yeah. very shallow inside. Yeah. They lack spirituality. They're very, very shallow. They're very ego-driven. Mm-hmm. You know, they're nice guys, but you can tell that there's a lot missing in here. Right. You know? So I've been in those situations. And I met guys that, you know, don't make six figures, but they're, they take care of their bills and everything is well off. And they're amazing guys. They, I can have intellectual conversations with them. And mm-hmm. they're not shallow. They're very spiritual, you know? So like I said... Yeah, the approach matters, but what matters most is like how you, re- who you really are, like how you carry yourself, you know, like what are your views? What's, what's, what are your morals? Like, you know, what do you believe in? You know, like I, I want to know the real you because income like doesn't really. Okay, but I, got, no, no, I got one for that. No, no, okay, no, no, okay, no, 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 make it more difficult. I know, I know. Okay, so ladies say income doesn't matter. And I feel like. To an extent, I did say, make that. So, okay, okay. To an extent, because I was going to say there's a difference between somebody that makes 40 grand, 50 grand. 100 grand because oh, 100 that person might be cheap 50 grand too so let me ask you um uh would you give up if a man was loyal look good sex was good all his other stuff but y'all gonna struggle month to month to pay bills mm. but check on the other boxes <laughs> mm. I think that's a tough question. That man. is a tough question because loyalty is very hard to come by. Yeah. And honestly, good sex is too, yeah. you know, um, that's rough because I've, I've been in similar situations where it was a struggle, yeah. you know, and it wasn't fun. It deteriorated the relationship more, you know, um, because somebody else had to put the pants a little bit tighter yeah. and they, you know, it was it's kind of hard to respect. I feel like it's kind of that hard one's to a little, respect them in a little bit. Two? Not necessarily. I'll say this because, man, everything is really situational. Mm. You know, I think it's it's harder to because because what look if at that making... situation when you when you allow money to define your relationship? Yeah, it's because at the end of the day, and I, it's fine. different for me to say that as a man because we are expected to be the provider, right? Mm. But, but what, as but a what woman, if you're making a certain amount and then you lose your job. Right. And so then that, it takes you some time to get a new job and stuff. That's that's what So I'm as saying. a woman, are you able to step outside of the this is the man, he's supposed to do this, this, and this. Mm-hmm. All right, I'm gonna pick up the slack. Yeah. I got your back. Yeah. Like if the relationship is, you know, if, if you're with somebody, right? You know, when you marry somebody, right? Mm-hmm. You know, through good and bad, right? I'm talking about going into a relationship like that. Now, if you're going into that's what if, I'm saying. like I said, again. It's very situational. It really just depends on the person. Okay. Like, do you want to, do you want somebody that's going to be like, I need this, 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 this is the mark off. Mm-hmm. You're not going to find your perfect person. Right. You're really not. Oh, yeah. So if it's somebody that's like a work in progress where he's a great guy, he's funny, he, he's loyal, he's everything, but you know, he's still trying to figure out his financial situation. You as a woman or even as a guy, like mm-hmm. it's really up to you. Cause guys have no problem, you know, dating a girl that doesn't really make much. Sure don't. Realistically. Yeah. If we got money, we don't care. We about got money, we don't get damn money. Yeah, that's just a bonus. It's like right. Sure. Men don't care. No. You can, you could be you, you may not even have a job, and they don't care. They be like, oh, I got you, baby. But I just but know I think that women do. Women do. Let's women do be because real. they want that stability. Exactly. You know, they they that's want that stability. Shit, it's nothing wrong but again, with right? But it, it again, it it really just you know, if you're going into something, mm-hmm. that's a little different. That makes the the, the saying, decision like, a little bit easier for certain women. Right. You know, like but me. What about you? So like. 
it took me some time to get to where I need to, needed to be. Like there was time where I was living paycheck to paycheck. Like I barely had, like, I'm not even kidding, like $200 in my bank account. And that's embarrassing. Even as a woman, you know, because I felt like I could have done more, you know, and I was still trying to get my, my life together, my finances together and everything in between. And I had a man who, you know, still provided and still was like, you know, helping me to an extent, you know, with what I needed to. So because of the struggle that I went through, I try to look at things a little bit more on an even scale. Mm. You know, not everybody's going to be in the same position in life. Mm -hmm. You know, you're going to see a 22 year old millionaire and then you're going to see a, a 45 year old man that only makes 50,000 and he's still trying to get it. Mm -hmm. You know, it really is situational based on their life, based on what's happened to them. You know, you never know what people go through. Mm -hmm. So because of, of me struggling to get to that point and being in a relationship that kind of like picked at it, you know, like it, it was like, damn, I was the one struggling and it was like hurting my relationship, you right. know? Okay. And then when the tables turned, when I was making money and then the tables turns, it was kind of like, ah, oh, shit, mm -hmm. you know, but it didn't bother me as much because, hey, listen, you know, like I was in love with this guy and you know, he was going through something tough and, you know. Yeah, that's he completely was, different. Right. I, I, that's why I say that's completely different. I'm just talking about, like, if you meet somebody, if it's like, again, I believe in 80-20, it's like 80% of what you want, you're going to get. Mm -hmm. And I, I feel like it's anything. But. So then it's more of, like, your decision. Right. So it's yeah. like, it's a decision that. If, if it's something that you want to, like, kind of put up with and see where it goes, yeah. but then you kind of got. It's like, can I be cool with yeah. probably just going Maybe just eat an Applebee's for a day night. <laughs> you know, like, maybe once a year at Ocean Prime or something. Yeah, like, like, how do you make that decision though? Ocean Prime because like, like if that, you though. just meet somebody mm. and it's early on, and that's that's kind of I guess what I was kind of trying to get. I, it's to. It's just with, really like, hard. The two same, yeah. They approach the same way. They got same similar qualities, mm -hmm. but they just make a different amount of money. So okay, then I guess it depends more on the women at that point. It really does. Um, how financially set is she? Yeah, but the woman we're asking is you. But, but here's this. Mm -hmm. I'm not in that situation mm -hmm. right now. Mm -hmm. So I, I, you know, I haven't met somebody that really wowed me or anything like that. You know, I've met some really dope people, but I haven't met somebody that wowed me to a fact where it's like, oh, yeah, I could totally accept this. You know, I know I make six figures a year, mm -hmm. you know, so it wouldn't bother. You know, I like, for example, I have clients, legitimate clients that they make six figures a year. These are women that makes over six figures a year. And their man barely like hit 40,000 a year or some of them are in stay at home dads mm -hmm. and that's okay with them because yeah. it works. It works for them. They like to work. These, these women love to work and they love that and they, they don't have to deal with I the kids. Some women like that. And yeah, they do. Like they, they yeah. like to, to have that, uh, I guess, superior role. Mm -hmm. Some women like some to, women like, like that, and and some men go for that too. Yeah, they, I, was say, I know some men. That some like that some shit. men are okay with yeah. You know, being but like, like I said, I know people that literally like the women makes more mm -hmm. more bread than the man does, and they're okay with it as long as there's a there's a balance. Man, listen, and, it's Oprah out here. I make yeah. seven, I make seven figures, but if you make eight. Oprah looking for a statement. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, I, like I said, that, that question is very difficult to answer because it just really depends. Like, I haven't met somebody that really wowed me. I, I think the, I think the main point with that stuff, or like that type of question, mm -hmm. is women have a hard time admitting that money matters. Yeah. Yeah. And I understand, like. Nobody wants to come off as like a gold digger or superficial or whatever term you yeah. want to give it. But it's like the reality of it is. Women don't want to take care of a man. Money matters. Yeah, to an extent. Yeah. It uh -huh. does. Uh -huh. It <laughs> matters. <laughs> to an extent. Nobody wants to take care of a man. You know? So, I mean, I, I think that's the, that's the main thing. And I, I ask the question a lot. And it's. Similar, you know, try to dance around the question. Like, ah, well, I like these things. But it's like, then when you bring up, like, okay, what does it take to maintain your lifestyle? Mm -hmm. You don't want to give that up. Mm -mm. Hmm. So we got to make a certain amount of money. Yeah. That 50000 ain't going to cut it. Yeah, so that, make, uh, that makes more sense. 1000 so, One like, <laughs> <laughs> so it's like... <laughs> and, and that's the difference, I think, between men and women because men are, and, and this is nothing against, this is just how we are wired. 
This is not. We don't care. Men, are, men, no men, men logical. We see it as potential, emotional. right? Mm-hmm. We want to know that if something happens to us, you can pick up the reins and the show will go on. Versus if something happens to us, the show is going to end. Mm. Right. We don't mind taking care of a woman. But it's just a matter of, again, if something happens to us, right. are you going to be able to pick up where I left off or is we, we, we done? It's over. Because I'm done, you can't help me. You can't help us. Yeah. I think that's, do you agree with that, Vic? I don't even care if you ain't got no money. I just need you to know how to yeah. manage money. You need to know how to, you need to know how to, how to yeah, pick up. I, I've said it in a few episodes before. Yeah. Like, I just want to know, like, if something happened to me, like, if I leave this earth, I mean, yeah, I got some things in place, but I want to be able to know, especially if we're married, like, we together, you my partner. I need to be comfortable enough to know that my kid's going to be taken care of. Yeah. You're going to be yeah, able to. Yeah, I mean, that, that's a, obviously a different, that's different. You know, like, you're in a full-blown relationship. You know, things are, things are a little bit different. Of course, a woman is not going to, I mean, everybody's different, but I, I wouldn't pack up my bags and leave like, oh, you broke now. You know, <laughs> it, it, it's not like that, you know. You know, like, you're yeah. my partner in crime. Okay, let's figure this out, you yeah. know. But, yeah, walking into something new. Yes and no. It, like I said, it really just depends on more of the comfort of the woman. Like, if a man's making a certain amount and she's making more, it really depends on her. I'm going to uh, test that theory. I'm going to send some broke niggas your way. We're gonna test uh, why does that <laughs> Why does that be broke? I feel like this conversation can go on for a while. Okay. Yeah. So, yeah. we might have to do a part two with Miss Michelle Angela. <laughs> but we are going to ask you one more question. Okay. Vic usually asks this question, but I'm going to ask it. Okay. Where do you see yourself business wise mm-hmm. in the future? Where do you see the growth going in the next five to 10 years? Good question. Um, I definitely see myself being um, either of my businesses, you know, multiplying or being, you know, becoming a franchise. Mm-hmm. Um, I definitely want to expand in the Tampa area, Miami. Mm-hmm. I don't know if I want to go stateside, you know, different states and stuff like that, mm-hmm. but you know, I definitely see my businesses multiplying mm-hmm. for sure with with what I'm doing right now currently. Perfect, perfect. So shout out to Instagram and website where people can find you. Do I do both or just one? Both. Both. Hey, go ahead. Put it all out there. We'll put it in the show notes. Too. Yeah. And look, you you know what half these dudes going to be, be like, oh, what's your OnlyFans? How, how can I find on OnlyFans? So, so my personal Instagram is Michelle X Angela. And my business Instagram for the ladies and the guys as well is Siren Skin Studios. That's it. Perfect. And we'll put that in the show notes for everybody. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> so, Absolutely. For those who are watching YouTube, we will have it in the show notes so you can go ahead and make sure you follow her. Uh, ladies, if you're in the Tampa Bay area, fellas, if you're in the Tampa Bay area too, we want to get waxed. Mm-hmm. Blow her up. Please. Scheduled appointments. Yes. BK got one next week. <laughs> <laughs> I ain't never getting waxed again, bro. <laughs> Shit is horrible. Oh, <laughs> but listen, we, we enjoyed this. We appreciate you being on the Thank show. You absolutely. Having. Absolutely. Yeah, we definitely enjoyed this. Um, guys, if you're watching this on YouTube, make sure you hit the subscribe button. Also, like and comment on this video if you enjoyed it. If you're watching this or listening to us, I should say on the podcast app, whether that's Stitcher, whether that is the podcast, Apple app, whatever, make sure you also subscribe and tag us. Triple Threat Podcast One. Tag us. Let us know what you're listening from, where you're at. And uh we are signing off. I'm one of your hosts, Chris Bruce, aka Detroit Mogul. Vic Gurley, aka MVP Vic. And your boy Brian Keys, aka BK six oh nine.